somewhere he shouldn't. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the greatest show on Twitch. You are tuned in to Melee It On Me, Season 4, Episode 11, The Real Melee It On Me 2.0. If you don't know who we are, we are a Melee-oriented podcast, but we're kind of covering a bit more of the entire Smash scene. First up from Michigan, we've got Joe Guy. Joe Guy, how's it going? Uh, I'm pretty good, dude. How are you, Prog? Uh, we'll get to you later on. We'll give Mango a little bit. Shouts to uh, Baby Mango, who you can actually use as a Twitch emoticon if you support Melee on me, so subscribe. But, Tapikins, how are you doing today? Doing well. I have the day off tomorrow. I'm going to hang out with Reno and Zozo, who made a cross-country road trip to SoCal, so it's going to be fun. Yeah, I saw uh, Reno actually uh, talking about his trip across the country from New York to California. And, you know, Reno was a mainstay here in the New York City region for a while. So it's definitely going to, we're going to miss him. But you guys are getting a good player, a great person. So. What are they doing in uh, California? He's moving out there. Uh, Zoso. Oh, is it permanent? Yeah, yep. it's, yes. it's permanent for Reno, not for Zoso, I believe. Oh. Yeah. That'll be a fun drive back. Oh. Or, I, I hope he's flying back. Because I think he's okay. flying. Reno needed a travel buddy, so that's why he, um, he took Zozo. He took, he took yeah. oh, okay, okay. I see, I see, I see. He's keeping the car or whatever. Meanwhile, special guest representing Cloud9, one of the Melee on me Illuminati and alumni. Uh, we have the, the two-time EVO <laughs> champion, the two-time EVO champion, the one-time MLG champion, so you got to say it one time for each time he's won it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mango, how's it going, man? I haven't seen you in a bit. Uh, it's going good. I just got back from PAX. That was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, it's been, uh, been hanging out, doing nothing. Well, ever since I won EVO, I've got no motivation for anything in life. I've just been breezing by. But, yeah. I, I, I don't know that, so I'll just agree with you. <laughs> I just need Armada to come destroy me so then I can get motivated again. So that's what I'm waiting for. Oh, I mean, hopefully it happens. I mean, we're not too far. If he doesn't, if he doesn't beat me at Big House, I'm going to be so mad at him. <laughs> I wonder I wonder what it's like for Armada going back because he, he spends like an entire summer here playing with like all these amazing players right and then he goes back and I guess Leffen's there but how how does he I, I just I, I don't I don't get how his mentality can handle like not playing a top player for so long except Leffen that's actually uh, pretty interesting to think about but I think he, he's used to it anyway so I think he'll be alright mm -hmm. that's just yeah. normal for him you know, it is kind of cool seeing uh, all of Europe kind of develop a bit more because of his presence and everything he's done for that scene. It's kind mm -hmm. of lit a spark under a lot of them. Like, I mean, Ice going Fox now. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. Is he? Yeah, yes, he's I heard. Yeah. Another one. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> yeah, the 20XX. That's, that's a little bit sad to see. Dude, yeah. my favorite thing, though, is when someone switches to Fox and just gets wrecked. I love that more than anything. <laughs> Because I think I know everyone always thinks they can just switch to Fox and do good, and then they don't, and it's like that's right. Because it's kind of an insult to us Fox players. I think me and Tove talked about this. <laughs> so it's nice when they come and they actually see the struggle of being a Fox main. It's not all rainbows and sunshine all the time. So we'll see how it goes for him. I'm actually pretty excited to see how that goes. Hmm. Yeah. Like baby hacks at Apex 2014. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely had some growing pains. Definitely, had to, <clears throat> dude. Growing pain. But I think hacks. I think hacks is at a point where he's like pretty much back at his old level now, like top playerness with Fox, which I think is a lot sooner than some people thought. Yeah, I think he got rid of a lot of his soft spots. Yeah, I think hacks is definitely where he's. Uh... <laughs> oh wait, wait, that... wait, wait! But but juggle guy, did you know that cheap cheap fish? Just subscribed. He wants to do that. Say what? He just oh, oh, wait. Oh. He's gonna do welcome to the family. So, welcome to oh. the family. <laughs> we are so excited to have you, right. cheap cheap fish. Thank you for supporting us. That's pretty good, Tafo. Oh. <laughs> it's not bad. It's a solid seven out of ten. Yeah. Welcome to the family, dude. You don't get a true. We'll have Scar re-welcome you later. The true welcome. 
Yes. I'll, I'll put a note to remind Scar later. Yeah, Scar, <laughs> Scar would definitely remind you. He'll definitely welcome you properly later. Definitely, because, you know, Scar is uh, on the way, and, of course, he is the man that does that stuff. Uh, meanwhile, thanks, guys, for asking. I'm doing pretty good. Um, I just moved uh, last weekend, so as you can see, uh, still trying to put together IKEA furniture. I'm not that great at it. Um, yeah. But otherwise, things have been pretty good. Um, can't complain, can't complain. Uh, but I guess let's go with this little uh, thingamabob called a PSA, a public service announcement. Anything for you guys? All right. Well, I can go ahead and go off the top of the list. And I just lost the agenda, but oh, okay, there we are. So real quick, so we have um, switch domains. Um, we're on, um, I would say mainly at Omni 1.5. We still need character guide writers. I'm, I am paying money out of my own pocket to get these going. So update your big bookmarks to MeleeAtOnMe.com. We are no longer MeleeAtOnMe. Um, we're working on the front page, we're working on some layouts. Um, ideally, the goal is that whether you're a new player or a veteran, we want to give you access to what you need within 10 seconds. So if you're a new player, we don't want you to be frustrated by confusing layouts. And so our goal is that whether you want to find how to play, find resources, find players around you, we want to answer all those key questions within 10 seconds of you landing on the site. And that's the goal. Good stuff, good stuff. Again, rest in peace, MeleeOn.me. We are MeleeOnMe. RIP. Um, we have a moment of silence for MeleeOn.me. <laughs> you know, we have so much history with that domain, all the way from my first, or one of our early episodes, to not too long ago. It's been a long journey. Dude, when Bobby first... Uh set up this website or um, acquired it from AZ who got the domain it was so ugly like, <laughs> and yeah I, I guess I fixed it up a little bit but eventually you know had to had to be, become a little bit bigger than that I was really afraid of the DDoS thing because um, we were on wordpress.com which meant we were kind of safe and now we're on wordpress.org which is like more independent and but like the DDoS thing hasn't really come up in 2014 so hopefully hopefully we'll be good on our own our yeah. own like independent operation now and i like whoa ow uh -oh. tap what's that made yourself or unplug your mic that tap -oh? you sound like i don't even know man yeah what's going on ow dan please mute your mic so you can unplug it and plug it back in uh -oh. it just, would be tough again we're destroying the audience's ears at the moment Yo, <laughs> R.I.P. I'm headphone so, users. I'm so sorry, headphone <laughs> users. I feel your pain at the moment. Poor, poor everyone. I, am I better? Oh, infinitely. Oh, okay, that's good. Okay. Nice. I think it was a USB connection. Anyway, so I apologize. We are going through a little bit of growing pains, but we moved because we wanted to increase functionality. And um, I, I have access to Giphy Cats now um, on this new WordPress, which is something I haven't had before. And so there's a lot more features we can work with with the new site. So I want to really um, provide guides and provide little strategy articles that I haven't really been able to do on the old WordPress that I can do now. And I'm sorry to everybody's ears that I broke. Um, <laughs> as, a, as a compromise, I won't say any more puns today. It was, it was a, a test. Given. It was a test. We were trying to weed out a PJH Stifler. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's still here, dude. The frequency still here. of that of that noise is to like specifically draw him out. Dude, I I know what Corgi's here now. Whenever you blow a whistle. Yeah. Uh, but next on the PSA is what's up, Tafikins? What's up, Tafikins? Yeah, didn't you have more on the list of the PSAs? Oh yes. Um, why don't you take this one? With VG Bootcamp, I heard they had some exciting news this week. Gimmer is pregnant. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we already knew that, Prog. Who's the father? That's the real question. His baby is video game boot camp, but there's going to be a new addition to the family, and that's the Xanadu venue. So if you guys aren't aware, basically, uh, Gimmer is, and the entire BGBC crew, 
they're going to be running Xanadu, the actual venue itself. Uh, they lost to the Magic Crew, but it sounds like Melee and PM are both weeklies instead of switching back and forth from bi-weeklies. Uh, but if you do want to let Gimmer know how much you appreciate this, and you want to thank him for, uh, or I guess congratulate him on his new arrival, you can go ahead and message him at VGBC underscore G-I-M-R on Twitter. And let him know that the Melee and Army team says congratulations and hoping for the best with your new arrival. Yeah, it's pretty big. I don't know what else to say. Like, congrats. Thanks, Gimmer. Good luck, like everything. It, it, it sounds pretty big. Like he's owning his own what? The entire building, right? Store. The business. Yeah. Everything. But uh, I mean, I think it's just amazing talking about. We always talk about, you know, how far the scene has come, and I don't think there are many people who, you know, embody that the same way as Gimmer does. You know, he used to stream events, and now, well, I mean, he's still streaming events. He's doing this as his day job. Now he's got the store, he's got the venue on his own place. So, um, you know, I think that's amazing. Congrats to uh, Gimmer and the VGBC crew and best of luck because that's definitely gonna be a very, very hard, uh, a hard adjustment for that crew. I'm not sure what the business acumen for operating and owning a venue that those guys would have, but best of luck, man. Um, and even just, I guess I'll tack on to that. Please, guys, if you are an active smasher, I beg of you, support your local scenes. Um, locals are the glue that put these events and everything together. Uh, everyone learns their craft at a local. And I know my home region, Long Island, New York, uh, recently had found a new venue, and they are closing down at the end of the month which really mm. sucks for those guys. So please support those guys, support those locals, support your local TOs because, well, things like majors like Apex, Evo, they don't exist without everyone feeding into it from local scene. So please support if you can. And actually, uh, as I rip on my earbuds, um, it actually may or may not happen, but... Uh, I actually might go to support their final event, and I might do a bit of commentary just to help them out. So, oh, it's, this those, is my those retirements are getting uh, getting shorter and shorter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm certainly enjoying life in the beach chair, but you know, once in a while, you gotta make an appearance. You know, um, sure. you know, they say the the more elaborate your retirement speech is, the quicker you come back. I don't know. I've been away for longer than this, so <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, speaking of commentary, don't you have some interesting things in the works? Not so oh. Illuminati. You have articles, yeah. right? I saw articles on Smashboards. What's that all about? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I've been kind of following your lead of a guy. Uh, you've been writing a series on, you know, how to be a TO and things to consider. And I know that we talked with it in uh, the commentary annals with uh, D1 and Scar, Toe, Y. We all basically said that, you know, none of us know what we're doing, really. We're all amateurs at this. Um, but, you know, we've kind of learned through trial and error. So uh, it's, uh, it's basically how can we impart what we've learned throughout all these years. And, well, I started writing these guides. The first one was posted on Smashboards this week. Uh, the second one, the draft has been posted. It might go up later on uh, next week. We'll see. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's important stuff because streams are becoming more prominent. Um, everyone is stepping their game up. And you look at, you know, how Project M popped up. You look at how people are going to be doing this for Smash 4. Yeah, there's a lot at risk. So, you know, may as well impart what I know, right? Nice guy. Dude, I read the first article. It was amazing. It's all right. <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> um, I'm going to link it in the chat. Yeah. Boom. Definitely liked it. Check out part one of this commentary guide, article, content, whatever you want to call it. Read it. And meanwhile, 
everybody seems to be a little busy these days. Prague's got his commentary series coming up. Robin, aren't you working on something coming up pretty big in about a month? Indeed. Uh, it's actually exactly a month from now. Yeah, we got, a, we got a tournament, the Big House 4 in Michigan on October 4th and 5th. And it's getting, getting, uh, getting pretty close to the end of the registration. We have a lot of people just have a few announcements to make, I guess, with that. Hotel rooms are already sold out, so I kind of made an announcement. There's a couple of alternative options. You can pay a little bit more to stay at the same venue. You can pay a little less to stay at a venue or a hotel next door. Let's go, let's go and get a room. We had, dude, I don't know. If you I did, I, not, told I, like, know. I told him like five times, but I tell him five times to come on the show, and he's still not on the show. Um, you know... I would like to say, you know, the, the hotels are only $20 extra a night. It's not like Eva where if you miss the boat, it was $150 extra a night. I highly recommend staying at the hotel that's near. It's a great experience to just chill, hang out with people on your floor. There will be open rooms where you can just go in and out and meet Smashers all day and all night. If that's yeah. what you like. Pretty much, dude, everyone I talk to, uh, after they go to a national and they didn't stay in the hotel, they say they regret it and they would stay in the hotel, in the venue. Got it, dude. Must. over again like, it doesn't matter how much it costs like you, you have to have that experience definitely just all also, better it's it's also like really cool at events like this and i think other events kind of lack is that kind of uh camaraderie like Taffa was talking about meeting everyone i remember just going back you know dare i say two months ago uh evo you know, walking around, seeing everyone with their badges, going to the airport, being on the plane, and meeting people who have that same passion and desire. And here it's a lot more focused with the people that you probably have seen on YouTube, on Twitch, or you will see soon, or you'll learn more about their scene. So definitely support big events and Big House 4. I mean, what more do you got to say about that, Rob? Well, it's, it's, it's not like, you know, I mean, don't go expecting Vegas, Evo, MLG, because it's, it's not that... Um, I think those events are like massive and really hype in their own, uh, in their own respects. This tournament is more obviously more grassroots. Um, a lot of the format and schedule is really catered exactly to what Smashers are used to. So I think um, that's really a, a huge part of the experience that speaks to the quality of it. And uh, if you come and experience it for yourself, I think you'll find that out. Awesome. So definitely go ahead and check out the. Big House 4, and aren't there two players who have been every single Big House? Uh, there's two out-of-region region players. players. One yeah. of them in the chat right now? <laughs> I don't know. Is SFAT or Violence in the chat? Oh, I think... No. You know, I, I, feel really bad. I feel really bad if there's, like, a random person who, like, flew in... <laughs> For every single big house, and I just like didn't notice them. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure those are the only two like non-Midwest players who have been to all three. Uh, Violence, aka Eric Lee, aka the homie, and uh, S Fat, aka Zach Cordoni, aka Mango's whipping boy for a few months. <laughs> Whip him into uh, shape, when... dude. Yeah. Didn't um, Mango win one of those? Big house? Yeah, he won big house too. And that's time he locks up. <laughs> That was, dude, you were on a run back in 2012 where I think you won, like, Impulse, FC, and then another tournament, and then Big House. I know. No one and talks about these things, dude. People thought you were going to go on, like, 2009 Mango status again, and then you got bopped by PP at Kings of Cali. What happened there? <laughs> I, I don't know, dude. <laughs> dude, I can go into the whole thing, but I don't, I don't, I don't say anything anymore because then everyone just says Johns. So I just learned to keep my mouth shut. All right. I know the new age Smasher metagame. You just keep your mouth shut. He's adapted to the matchup. Yeah, dude, I know. The, I know the new age Smasher matchup. You just shut up and deal with it. Tap again for the PSAs. No problem. Is oh, one more? more, one more, uh, one more announcement. Uh, we're gonna have to cap teams for melee and PM at Big House. Wow. I'm not gonna cap. Uh, I'm not gonna cap overall. I'm not gonna cap singles, but teams is gonna have to be capped. It's gonna be 256 for melee and 128 for PM, which like 
these entrant numbers are kind of on pace to be around there anyway, so I don't think it'll be a huge deal, but uh, just wanted to announce that. Cool. So, who wants to predict how many people there will be? Oh, total, total. Total unique my, my My unscientific Excel chart says, like, 400 for Melee is a possibility, and 500 uniques is also a possibility. So those are pretty exciting numbers. And there's, this is like a lot of work to do. I'm excited for the challenge, though. It's going to be good. Damn. Work, man. <laughs> I'm the only one who gets excited about these challenges. Everyone else is like, oh, really? Complains. <laughs> I'm, and I'm like, Excel spreadsheets! <laughs> so. You're a true okay. TO, dude. That's why. <laughs> you know, I look at efficiency and um, what was it? I like looking at Gantt charts. I'm not going to lie. Gantt charts are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel Lee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, is that it for the announcements? I think so. All right. We're going to PSA is let's get to the core of the show. So, well, I, I guess Scar would be a pretty solid person to ask about PAX Prime. Uh, if you guys aren't aware, Twitch.tv had a little something something going on featuring star players like one of our guest panelists tonight. Mango, tell us about uh, Prime. Uh, like the whole thing, or just like the melee melee part? Yeah, let's we'll start with the melee part. Uh, it was pretty cool. It's the, the well, setup and everything was just like amazing. Mm. So that was pretty cool. Uh, it was fun, you know, just little Iron Man's. It wasn't too competitive, but competitive enough. And I'm pretty sure everyone had fun, and it was awesome that they did that. Or Scar's the one who did all the manager work. So that it was a fun time for sure. Cool. And then the event itself, you know. Uh, it's a huge, huge convention. A lot of developers Dude. and a lot of, a lot of people, uh, you know, who are known throughout all spheres of competitive gaming. I know, I was on Twitter. I saw Justin Wong tweet that he lost you at some point. <laughs> What'd you do, Mango? It was, uh, well, the whole event was crazy because like you just turn a corner and it's like, oh my god, some esports star right here, and then you turn another corner and it's like, oh my god, what's going on? So that was nuts. And it's just like even when we were at the Twitch party, and like you just see all these like. Famous esports people are just like taking shots, and you're like, "Man, this is crazy." And then there's just Dude, little mango sound, right there. That sounds like my nightmare because I'm I'm such an esports noob. I'm only like in the Smash community, uh -huh. so I'd probably turn to someone and be like, uh, "So who are you?" And I'd just <laughs> blow blow my cover and get thrown out. Yeah, you get thrown out real fast, dude. I would have your back, dude. Don't worry about it. We're just playing with me. We got this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, Pax. Uh, Actually, we're seeing a bit of a, a bit of a uh, kind of really interesting shift in terms of Smash and Twitch, or rather, I think it's being brought more to the forefront. Uh, I remember around Apex, they had that ad, or after Apex, they had the ad, uh, where Smash lives, on Twitch.tv. Oh yeah. Cast. Um, yeah, um, it's it's really cool, you know, seeing their kind of interest in the Smash scene. Uh, and then recently at Zenith, uh, not too long ago, there was a little mini documentary filmed by Phil Nolan at Mashable, which is a huge, huge site. Yeah. Talking a bit about this relationship between Dude, uh, so the good. Smash series and Twitch. Uh, and Joe, I, of course, to the rescue, linking it in the chat. So you guys, it's like eight or nine minutes. You can watch it after the show, maybe if we have a long break. But uh, definitely bookmark it, check it out, because it's, it's really, really cool thinking about how Dude, it's come. Freaking, uh, I, like, being at the event made me realize how many people actually love watching Smash. Like, these famous, like, League people, all these famous whatever just came up to me, and I had no idea who they were. They're like, yeah, dude, we love Smash, and I was like, oh. And, like, I found out that Smash is, like, like actually a ton of, like, people like it, like, a lot. So that's pretty cool to hear that, like, you know, these League players who have, like, you know, 300k followers still watch Smash and stuff. Like, just Smash randomly, you know? So it's pretty awesome to hear that people love Smash that much. Yeah, and I think it's really, really cool how the scene has taken advantage of the technology as it's come out. Yep. Um, you know, I always say we went from VHS to front page of Twitch. <laughs> Definitely did. But you know, it'd be, it'd be interesting because we progressed so much. If we wrote a, somebody wrote a historical article on how we went from handy cams to VHSs to DC++ to YouTube to where we're at now. Oh, man. Did we put it that way? <laughs> Smash really started from the bottom, dude. Like, Oh, my God. 
That phrase gets used a lot. Smash actually did start from the bottom. Really started from the bottom. <laughs> yep. It's, it's crazy to think about, dude. Frog, do you remember the ROM? I think it was ROM 4. The stream? stream where you were text like texting play by plays of <laughs> that was I think ROM that was one PPMD one ROM three. Yeah. Uh was it okay. So yeah, yeah people were like, Oh, okay, I see a couple pixels on the screen. One looks like a Marth and <laughs> I think that's a Falco, so I think it's PB vs M two K. Yeah, go pixels. <laughs> and then so, and then Frog so crazy, comes to the dude. rescue and like, Yes. We get to watch somebody text us play by plays of these. We're happy about it, dude. Around. It's like, it was... oh, this guy went to the bot. Okay, I think that was a gimp. <laughs> it was just like, it was, it was ridiculous. That was actually one of the most fun experiences I've had in hindsight. Uh, at the time, <laughs> it sucks. I didn't move from my chair. I think that's the time I got pulled over, too, on the way back from ROM. That was the time. Because that's when Waffles came out. Yeah, I got pulled over that same night in oh, a man. car with. Hungry Box, Jungle, who you guys know now as the Moon, one of his Jungle, <laughs> and, uh, and Ko Ping Kingpin from Tennessee, I believe. Oh, okay. But it was it was an interesting experience. But yeah, that was a uh, that was a lot of fun. But yeah, you know, the entire Smash scene has done a lot in terms of how we've come along. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just impressive. Let's see what's up next, and we'll take advantage of it the best way we can. That's kind of our, uh, our motto. Um, I don't have anything else to say about PAX Prime. Anyone else? I, you know, congrats to Mango for winning that uh -huh. five-character um, Iron Man. Your Falco definitely put in work. And Music Wait, King really wanted how to How many... That. I, how many Iron Mans have there been? I, I, I've lost track of, like, who's won what. Is this, like, the fourth Iron Man in the last three weeks? What's going on? The third Iron Man. So, Mango and Mewtwo King played two 26-man Iron Mans. I got robbed, and, uh, dude. Smashed the record. He Can I talk about that real quick? Yeah. Can I say something real fast? So, yeah. Mewtwo King, being the butthole that he is. <laughs> so, the first one, I just, got, I just drank way too much, and I forgot I had to do it. And they yelled at me, they're like, you have to do it. I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm just gonna get destroyed. It's not gonna be fun. They're like, just do it anyway. So I did it, and I was like, okay, like I'm sorry, like I didn't mean to give you guys that shitty show, and I felt really bad about it. So I'm like, okay, next day, I'm not gonna drink all day, and I'm gonna like play Iron Man with my heart. And then, <laughs> so after the thing's over, I'm like, all right, Jason, you ready, to Iron Man, or well, what's up? And he goes, he goes, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do it tonight. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, all right, whatever, I guess. Uh -huh. So then I start drinking or whatever, enjoying, you know, it's the end of the event. So I'm like having fun drinking. And then he messages me, he's like, hey, do you want to do it? And I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> this motherfucker. I, I, he scammed me, dude. He scammed me so dude, hard. Underneath that robot mask is like a very evil, like, <laughs> methodical <laughs> mastermind. I was so mad. I'm like, oh my god. And then I did it anyway and got pooped on again. Which So I, oh my god. I got scammed, dude. That's all I gotta say. What is the, um, what is the breaking point? In an Iron Man, where like he starts beating you, what at what number of characters do you think? What do you want? Gets. <laughs> so Wait, you won what? the five. You, you won the five character Iron Man. He won uh -huh. the twenty six character Iron Man. At what point in between does it shift to like M two K? M two K just knows this game way too freaking well. I think. Well, I just think I'm way better at all the high tiers and good characters. And uh, uh, and he's definitely better with all the low tiers and worthless stuff. That means nothing. So yeah, I think up until he's got. I think up until mid tier, it's pretty even, and then once he goes below that, he just dominates me. <laughs> I also think his play style has an advantage over me in the a whole Iron Man, because he's gonna play lame and just sit back and play safe, and I'm just gonna like approach with Roy and lose. <laughs> that was another thing that I, another factor I think that went into it, but uh, whatever. <laughs> so, one day to be continued, uh, maybe it's something that. Uh, I might see you at. I was originally scheduled for next month. Yeah, next month. Uh, might get pushed back, but you know the documentary episode. Uh, just keep that on. Oh Pete yeah, what is, is that still like? It, what is the status of that? It's happening. We just don't know when. Hmm. Um, oh yeah, Samox was. Because uh, like Armada is going to be in the states soon. Maybe uh, I'm going to call Samox and see if. You can work something out. 
Who knows? Oh, wait, the wait, what, Doc Man episode? The thing where we all get together and shoot the thing? Yeah. Yeah, with, uh, I don't want to, well, I'm not going to get into that, but it'll be interesting. <laughs> like the <laughs> little Smash reality show. I'm wondering if, like, you could use some spreadsheets to enhance, like, the narratives. Use some corgis to enhance the narratives. <laughs> Corgi I love corgis. I agree with Prog. Team Corgi <laughs> is ever so increasing. Yep. Uh, All right. But, um, yeah, up next on the agenda, we have Labor Day weekend. I don't know what this part of the agenda is for. Tathkins, tell us about it. Um, okay, so we had multiple tournaments, and um, I'll talk about the other. I'll, actually, I don't know any of these tournaments. Let's just bring uh, the Crimson Buster on. I mean, the Buster! He's, he's so, the. I think what this was referencing was, I think, Jungle Guy talking about in his week in review how uh, normally this kind of year isn't uh, too active. This is the uh, off season. Yeah, everyone's yeah. heading back to school and all that stuff, so it's kind of a surprise that we got the numbers that we did this week, right? Labor Day weekend was, like, huge. There were, okay, like, there, there were even two tournaments that got... 100 plus entrants that I didn't even know about. Apparently some, like, pizza tournament in SoCal. <laughs> like, Daniel, do you know about this? What What is this sorcery? Okay, so in the, um, kind of near the Irvine area, a pizza place has opened their um, opened their venue on either Tuesday or Wednesday night. It's, like, 2 to $3 entry fee. They have beers and they have a good time. They had 100 entrants come on that Tuesday or Wednesday last week. It's a Jeez. weekly event. Mm. Yeah, and... There were three other tournaments that got like between 100 and 200 entrants, which like this has never happened before, ever. And one of those tournaments, Super Smash Sundays, the legendary return after like what was it, a six-week layoff, something like that. And uh, to talk about that, we have the man himself. Yo. The Crimson Team Oxys. The Crimson <laughs> Blur. Hey, Moxie. Let's go. Are here? How's it going? Here? How's it going? Uh, Arian, what's up, dude? What's up, bros? What's up? Right, what are you going to talk about, about? What's up? Tell us about SSS. Uh, it's just It just came back. Uh, we, we had like a five, six week break because it was the renovation of Super Arcade. And frankly, like, we just wanted a break because the summer was like so draining. And uh, so we came back. We got really good numbers. Seems like uh, the Evo bump uh, hit us again, and uh, SoCal is pretty much going to get 100 plus. If you post it on SoCal Melee, it's just going to get 100 plus, um, even on weekdays. Um, so we're going to have to manage with the new numbers, and we're going to have to like kind of kind of do things. But it looks like the production is a little bit better, and we've made some changes. So um, I think uh, the last success was probably uh, one of the better ones we posted. So uh, you guys can check out the archives, of course, on Team Monster YouTube as always, and. Uh, it was a pretty successful event. We're going to do it again, of course, bi-weekly uh, until the end of time, apparently. Johnny uh, won, right? Uh, yeah, Johnny won the last one. Uh, it was kind of weird because uh, we had, like, Lucky in Australia, and we had, um, we had, uh, who else was gone? Uh, no so fiction, fiction, no Westfall. Fiction like, yeah, yeah, Fiction has hand problems. And, uh, <laughs> West, yeah, he's like, he's like, actually, like, <laughs> Serious, serious pain, dude. Okay, I'm hey, sorry. You I'm laugh, sorry. dude. You, you gotta, you gotta freaking do some risks. Like, I have hand dude. problems too, dude. But I, I would still never not go to a tournament because of it. I just deal with it. All right. I'm just laughing at fiction for being a wiener. That's it. <laughs> yeah. ba basically, it. And uh, Wes was at some tournament, right? So he was not there either. Um, so next one will be kind of the the more traditional return where the whole top five will be there, um, and that's on the 14th. Uh, coming up. Sick. Yeah. Wait, dude, what's up with your five dollar entries, dude? What do you mean? Well, I'm moving back soon. I'm trying to get some ten dollar entry going, dude. Wow, <laughs> wow, money grabbing, dude. <laughs> well, I bet you that, are. That does remind me of the article that Tapkins wrote earlier this week about possibly raising venue fees at events, and we'll talk a bit more about that in the next segment of the show. Um, but yeah, continue. Hey, can, I, can, can I plug in something here? So we're going to take questions, and we have 
a great commentator here writing some great articles. And we have two awesome TOs here. So if you want to hashtag ask MIOM, we will field some questions at the end of the show. Um, this week, we'll talk about TOing and commentating. Anyway, go on. Indeed. I forgot what we were talking about now. We were talking about t raising the venue fee. So I wrote an article today about it. And the TLDR, if you didn't read it, so we're going to have a lot more people um, enter tournaments. And this requires a TO to get nicer, ven uh, larger spaces, larger venues, and that puts more liability on the TO. Um, just in case it flops, they're going to have to put money out of their own pocket to pay for it. And also, more importantly, um, Wii U setups are $500. Um, it's no joke. And so I don't think $5 is enough of an incentive for people to bring their own setups and have them risk getting stolen. So I think the extra venue fee should be going towards either A, um, towards the people who bring setups, or B, paying for security, because I think this is a real issue. Mm. Uh, it, whether it's the venue fee increasing or other revenue streams, like a lot of TOs are going to have to reconsider what their structure is, because I, I I agree with you. The first big like Smash Four regional, Smash Four for Wii U regional, that doesn't address security concerns is going to be a disaster. Just because like so, somebody's going to get something stolen, you know, it only takes one, um, one rotten egg to ruin the entire tournament in that aspect. Um, I don't really have too many, you know, like, I, I haven't gone in-depth with the ideas on how to solve that, but I do know that's going to be a problem. Yeah, it's it's a brave new world. I remember uh, after EVO 2013, a lot of players were asking, you know, how do I get an LCD? Because they're seeing, you know, these other fighting games up close and personal for the first time, they're interested in it. Now, well, you have to get one if you want to be uh, up on the new uh, Smash Brothers game, plus those other ones. So it'll be tough. It's, uh, it's going to be tough, man. $500 the hit, for a, the, a like, setup. Ugh. The biggest weakness of the Smash community is also kind of like, kind of cool because... We use CRT TVs, right? And they're outdated, and they're rubbish to the general public. They're heavy. You don't want to carry them around. But that also means, like, I've never heard of a CRT TV getting stolen <laughs> at a tournament. The small ones. Not, yeah. not like, you know... A, no one's going to rob a CRT, dude. Yeah. No, no thefts, like, out of cold blood. Like, <laughs> some dude randomly walks in, decides he wants to take a CRT. Oh, let me get a piece of that. Back. Yeah. Dude, but, if but, it's like, a trinitron, I don't know, dude. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, yeah. like trinitron, I oh, can't stand this. Are those series? Are those series nice and thick? I don't know. Oh, my man. God. Do you know how dude, big, big of a nerd you sound like right now, Arian? Dude, trinitrons are so still... heavy. How can you get away with doing more than one? Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> so funny, dude. I, I could do it. I could run out with one just real quick. Yeah. yeah but, um, you can steal like two Macs and fit them in your car, and you only lose like seventy dollars. So now with you know the HD TVs, that's a different story. You can carry that out like on a finger. Yeah. Five seconds, someone doesn't look, it's gone. You know. Oh. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, stuff's gonna I, I, have to be addressed. Yeah, I think security's an issue. I think that's probably the most minor point in the article. I think that. Uh, what the general point of it is, I'm very happy that Topper brought it up because it's, I'm happy that like more people are thinking about things like this. Um, but overall, it's not going to really solve anything if we move it up five dollars. I don't think. I think that the cost of the of future tournaments is way more than any five dollar per head is going to solve. Um, and honestly, I don't really trust our grassroots structure to uh, properly allocate money in that fashion. It hasn't really been proven in the past. We've had high venue fee tournaments and. Almost none of that money goes invested back back in the community, with the exception of few TOs. And those are, you know, how many truly like the true TOs have, have really invested back in the community with venue fees over time? You can probably count them on one hand. Um, so I, I'm kind of skeptical about that. But that's because I, I don't believe in our infrastructure as much, and I think that's really where where we're gonna have an issue in the sense that once we get the Smash Four bump, once we get the Evo, now that the Evo bump is passed, we're getting to a point where um, a lot of these you know, grassroots organizers can't really sustain their attendance. And, you know, we're seeing in SoCal, like, in SoCal, there's pretty much, um, 
it's getting to a point where the attendance is getting out of hand. Um, we're we're going to need bigger and bigger venues. We're going to need ballrooms for our locals, you know. Um, and luckily, you know, we've we've been kind of doing it enough that I think we'll we'll be we'll, we might be okay. Uh, but it's kind of making it hard for our our other organizers, like the non-team oxies and non, uh, you know, Mayhem's gotten big enough that they they can probably handle it too. The the they can't really handle some of the attendance. Even if they post like a random local, it's going to get a lot of people, and sometimes it doesn't fit in those venues. They so, got 317. Yeah, 317. That's ridiculous for a local. And that's going to happen in more regions. We're going to keep growing. Smash 4 is going to make that happen, especially if we keep it multi-game. If we're going to do Project M Melee and Smash 4, all that stuff, attendance is going to get out of hand, and I don't know if everyone can handle it. Um, in fact, I don't think anyone, everyone can handle it. And we don't have equipment and, and many things, especially production, to meet the to meet the the needs that we that we have. So I think that's the bigger issue. I think t moving to ten dollars is really not really solving anything. It's more of an administration pro administrative problem. We have no core central body. Um, I have an interesting proposal. I call this the Music King attendance rule. I think that at a local tournament, if you have that many events, I think you should only be allowed to play in three events max. Oh, Music King's gonna complain already, dude. He's getting ready. He's typing up, <laughs> he's he's typing up he's a storm. In this chat, typing up an essay right now, no, saying how he why. needs it to sustain his life and okay. ruining his life and I think yada yada yada. Events for locals more than reasonable because if you have six events, you have melee, PM, and Smash Four singles and doubles, and you have some guy make top eight and all some six asshole games. named Meat King. Like, or <laughs> or you want to track him down for polls if for some reason you're still running round robin polls at 300 man locals like that. Delays the tournament. And it's just a logistical nightmare, and it will delay the tournament significantly. I mean, I, I or or you could just stop hosting multi-game events, like we've all to have been doing by now. Which is to say that our attendance gets to a point where it's reducing the quality of the event by making it multi-game, and that's yeah. really what should matter. I think attendance is really overrated. I think getting a lot of people at your tournament is like something anyone can do nowadays. If you have Facebook, you can probably get a lot of people at your tournament because Smash is so big that people just show up. I think hosting a quality event is much more rare and something that we don't really see as often. You know, there's a lot of bad events. There's tons of bad events. And a lot of bad events in my time. There have been to a lot of bad events. And then right now, I think we're actually at like the height of it. There's so many bad events around the community. A lot of tournaments not finishing. A lot of tournaments going late. And even bigger problems like that. They just don't have a stream. The stream is bad. They have a lot of commentators. All these problems. Uh, and, you know, multi-game is not going to help that. All these increased logistics that they, the actual, like, staffing can't handle aren't going to help with that. So that's my suggestion. I mean, we still support the other games. Like, SSS has a Project M version. That's happening this weekend. But we just do it at different different times so people can actually play. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's kind of becoming a bit of a trend. Uh, I mean, we're talking about Gimmer uh, with Xanadu, how that had to go from being, you know, both games in one night to now rotating, or now it's going to be two versus uh, two a week. So yeah. I mean, it's... It's a good problem to have, I guess. Yeah, I think I think the multi-game event should be saved for the big regionals and nationals, because that's when um, that's when like the effect of combining communities actually strengthens strengthens the attendance. And if you have someone who's hosting a national, then they're usually like they usually kind of at least know what they're doing <laughs> to a certain extent. So that's when the quality of the tournament isn't necessarily diluted. But at locals, dude, I, I, I don't know how TOs are going to be able to handle like four or five, even six events. That's crazy to me. I've never had more than like four events at, at a tournament, especially a local. Yeah. Plus, I think it's healthier. I think it's healthier for each individual game. Uh, I think uh, one of the decisions we made in SoCal was instead of like me personally handling everything to do with Project Dev and try to make it like, Hand, handcraft, make their scene better. I just gave them resources. Like, I gave them a venue. I gave them, like, contacts. I constantly helped them. But I made sure their leadership kind of did it. And that's good because if you see what the problems the Brawl community has had recently is, is that their attendance has dropped. And so they've been dropped from uh, primarily Melee-hosted events. You know, Melee TOs hosting events. Stop putting Brawl in because their attendance didn't justify it financially. So uh, when you have your own organizers, you have your own backbone. And so I think... SoCal PM, like even if I stop helping them at this point, they keep going, and that's a good thing, you know. And and I think that's that's really what's got to happen. I think the the organization has to be more dispersed across the different games. Let the people who actually play the game run the tournaments. Yeah, 
it's, these are a lot of logistical things that I think people need to be prepared for, and I am going to be writing articles about like multi-game events and my philosophy on them, especially if they start at like 5 p.m. Like, there's no way they're going to finish all three events in like four hours. Yep. Thank um, you. I'm also I'm going to write an article on how to improve like security at tournaments. Um, yeah, poor poor man like poor budget style. So. If you can't hire your private security firm to secure your TVs, I, I have some ideas, and they're not like they're not completely field proven, but I think they're good ideas. Look for that. Cool. Yeah. And, oh. and I and I think with the increased attendance, this is my last point. Like, if you have 300 people, like. I'm just gonna be really brash. Like most of them are new players, and if you're still a top player, you're gonna and you're winning these tournaments. You're still making a fair share of money. Like if people are complaining, well, I want multi-tournament events because it's how I live. You're playing in a 300-man local. You're gonna still make money. Beach King. Yeah. <laughs> this is only you're only talking to one person, dude. I only play one yeah. game. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you're just talking time. to Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Right, go yeah, on. It's it's going to be a big issue because when you look at how, uh, I mean, even here in the tri-state region, we're seeing a lot of different uh, locals hap, uh, hap, pop up every every week or so, and you know there are different areas, so the options are there. So maybe you know, if there is a bit more uh, spread out and people want to host uh, events for all the games, by all means, like, um, it's. It's it's going to be a really really difficult transition to make though I think overall in terms of you know helping these communities get on their feet you know lead them in the right direction like Crimson was talking about earlier um, and well you know it's it's going to be interesting that's going to be a huge part of 2014 and the beginning of 2015 so I just know that if you want to make things easy and you want to host Smash Four. Post some Wi-Fi tournaments for 3DS. Don't have to worry about setups or anything like that. They should bring their own gear. Uh, that being said, I think I'm we are not ready. <laughs> You're thinking salty. I, you know I, mean? <laughs> I told you, dude. Has, I told he, has you. Up, he has set up the Mewtwo tent and wrapped it around this podcast, and we are at his mercy. <laughs> right <now. laughs> I went to the ledge. Well, I win. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Man. I just got him. MTK is uh, typing out this, and definitely we understand his feelings on it. Uh, however, we're gonna we're gonna take this to uh, a quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I think this is hilarious. It's like, oh, I, wonder how, I wonder if he realizes like how little we care. Yeah, we don't. Know we don't. We don't. He doesn't know, dude. He, he has no know. idea. He has no idea. He used to think we do. Oh God. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, That's funny. Uh, we are going to go to a quick commercial break. Uh, as you guys know, we're basically done with the show tonight. Uh, but you guys have a voice. You guys want to be uh, part of this. We are letting you, of course, you said hashtag AskMIOM. Uh, go ahead and ask us, ask the crew, whatever. We got some time to kill. But let's go to break right about now. We'll see you in a minute.
<laughs> what the fuck? Dude, it's, a mechan- it's my mechanical keyboard. Jesus it makes Christ. Noise. It makes a lot of noise. Yeah. Is that a mechanical te- so, keyboard? We are back. Uh, welcome back to my Hillary on. Um, and, yeah, you know, we did talk a bit about, you know, the whole how do we manage these multiple games. And, you know, I think a lot of these options will hurt players because, uh, you know, everyone will play what they love, what they enjoy. And, it's, you know, these are all people who put time in their craft. And, of course, you know, they should be respected for their efforts and kind of taking that away from them. It sucks. Um, but, you know, it's fortunately this isn't a problem we have to deal with quite yet, but soon. Um, I know soon I don't foresee us dropping anything because that doesn't really fix the situation. But, Tapkins, go ahead. Real quick, I apologize. We shouldn't be laughing at Mutant King. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, I, I really am. Gotta be serious. So I apologize, but if look at the landscape, like, I don't think six event tourneys are realistic. And that's, we run, just from SoCal, Ari knows, we run till 2 a.m. at Mayhem's just winning two games. If we add Smash 4 to the mix, I'm not even sure if we'll finish by four. And I think that's just a reality. I think three three events should be the limit at locals. If your your scene is anywhere near like booming, as much as um, everyone else is in this post Evo effect time period. All right. So do we have the questions? We have a couple of questions. Again, thank you all for messaging us. You can follow us on Twitter at Melee on Me. Um, and it's. Uh, Cool getting some questions from you guys. So first and foremost, if someone were trying to get into competitive Smash, what would be some videos and guides you would show to them? Well, I mean... Uh, well, videos, you just uh, you just find the person who mains your top character, and you're probably going to want to play them, or watch their videos and stuff. Um, well, so if they have no semblance of tech skill, watch some advanced how-to-play videos is a great start. Um, this is a really open question, so if they don't have any semblance of tech skill, um, show them that. If they're a little more nuanced, um, do what Mango says. Find the character, players that play your character, and learn from them. I think you should show them the documentary, and if they're not into it after that, then it's not meant to be. <laughs> Are we talking about someone who's already like playing and officially in the scene, but just, you know, doesn't know where to start, or what? I don't know, it was kind of open. You can only fit so much in 140 characters. It's true. Um, for someone who's out, still outside the scene, definitely the documentary, and things like the that new Twitch uh, Smash documentary mini episode. If it's someone who's, like, already kind of in the scene, but not going to tournaments yet, then maybe some hype matches? I don't know. That's that's what got me me going in my first tournament. Like some really hype matches, the feeling that okay, I need to join this right now. When you know Waffles is screaming his head off, maybe I'll find something similar and uh, find a shared experience at my local, you know, here in Michigan. Cool, cool. I think we're waiting for our next question. Go, go on to read this one. Um, do you think you'll ever have a newer player on the podcast with you guys? Uh, you know, just to see how they view the game? Good question. <laughs> how do we decide people? Uh, this producer chiming in, I would like to point out I have been on once. I am, <laughs> I've only been playing for a year. <laughs> John, John uh, is actually a really good example of this. I think, so our, our producer John here joined kind of like on a whim randomly just uh like following miom i think bobby had john on the show as a call-in for a smash lab or some some like off week thing that bobby was doing yeah he was just doing like random call-ins and yep worked up the courage to call in random call-in and john here had been in the scene for like maybe a month tops i don't know maybe not even that and boom is the birth of something beautiful. <laughs> so um, I guess that doesn't really answer the question, but 
maybe Bobby has something planned or Daniel like on the off weeks. I think if we get a little bit more interactive and bring some new players in, that'd be a pretty amazing idea because um, we've shown that it, it already kind of worked with John, right? It brought him into the scene. At least I think yeah. it did. <laughs> yeah. I think what we look for in terms of Collins, to be honest, is just more so, not even just like the skill level of the player, but um, whether or not they're contributing to a community in some mm -hmm. capacity. So I'm not saying Matt Zen's bad, but we bring Matt Zen, we bring Princeton, <laughs> we bring we bring people. The guests we have on the show regularly are people who contribute to the community, and that's why we bring them on. Nothing's um, better than like having a call in come on, and they just like they will just talk. You, you you tell them to talk, and they will talk, and then you cut them off, and then they stop talking, <laughs> and you say talk again, and then they go on. <laughs> Um, all right. Um, what's the next question? Um, we're gonna skip. So we're we're kind of filtering through these. Why does Joe guy have me blocked on Twitter? LOL. No, I'm gonna skip that. What's the general view on custom move sets for Smash Four? What do you guys think? Uh, I I'm gonna have to sit this one out. I I don't even know how they work. <laughs> Prog. I mean, personally, I think it it's kind of cool. Um, you know. It adds a bit of a layer of depth. I mean, of course, I play a bit of Marvel, so knowing how to deal with various assists and things like that, it's all, it all comes with that. Um, um, but, you know, kind of adding, like, hey, this character isn't good against this. Well, if I use this custom move, maybe it'll help out. I don't know. I think it's going to add some additional depth. I think at first, definitely, we should try that being a tournament more uh, a tournament mainstay at the very least at the side of them for locals maybe just being how we play the game with uh, with a uh, custom exact I'm for it. I have, I have a quick question for um, in terms of counter picking logistics so obviously stages pick first winner will pick the winner will pick their character first now, do you think that character, the winner, should pick his custom moves first or see what his opponent picks in terms of character? Before, uh, because if the winner has to pick his moveset and character first, then that his is opponent has, has a super counter pick. Very so interesting. Uh, <laughs> I think, we, we, shouldn't we do it like how uh, Street Fighter Cross Second did gems? It's very similar, right? But then again, I don't know. It's it's kind of different because it's custom move sets. Soul Calibur had like uh, occasional uh, custom move set tournaments, I think. Uh, I mean, it's it's really early. Obviously, we don't even know how it works. Uh, but I would guess you'd have to do some tour double blind, right? Like that, since it's such an impactful decision for the first game, you do double blind. I would guess, and then after that, it'd have to be. Uh, I think it'd still be double blind, even for game two, because it's like that. Yeah. It's just too strong a counter pick. I feel like that's yeah. you change your whole character. Like it's ridiculous. I think some people are saying, well, you gotta lock your lock your move sets the entire set. But what if you have multiple characters? So I would disagree with the chat's notion that you can lock because you can always counter pick a different character, and then like, how does your opponent know what your custom move set is for all the entire cast? So it's gonna be interesting to figure out logistically. Anyway, yeah, I'm it's hard to it. say. It's, it's not even the game's not out yet. It's hard to say. I think we're probably gonna the first few months probably do a regular rule set, uh, for, just to see the game first, and then it's probably gonna be an experimental thing as it goes on. Uh, yeah. Sounds like fun, dude. Like I, I want to try uh, the different things. That seems really cool. Um, I want to make a broken mark. You know what I'm gonna do? So of course. actually, I think this is a mainly an on me initiative. So um, I think. You know, we'll have a list of like questionnaires, like, did you allow custom move sets or not? And I want to survey the TOs, like, by giving them the survey to fill out, like, did you, what were the settings you used, and what are the pros and cons? And so this will give us kind of some metrics on what kind of works and what kind of doesn't. And I think just as an encouragement to the community, can we? Be, I want us to be a little more liberal on our um, rule sets before we kind of pin down something because we don't know anything about the game. It would be tragic to play like three stages on week one. Um, so be liberal, give us feedback. I'll create a I'll create a spreadsheet and a form so that we can get kind of a community idea of like what is a good rule set over time. Anyway, what's the next question? <clears throat> uh, all right. Next question. Uh, well, 
Um, next question looks like it's going to be uh, opinions on dropping a game because the scene is too small. Um, I always personally say never drop it. Um, if you love the game, you're going to stick with it no matter what. As long as you have one other person to play against, you have a scene. That's someone to strive to be better than, to be, to learn mm -hmm. from, so forth. I'd say never drop a game because the scene is too small. Uh, you can pick up other games, you can still do your research, maybe <clears throat> go majors or regionals, but yeah, I think, uh, I don't think you should drop one. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that it's all about the love of the game. If you're doing it for, I mean, if you really are doing it for the money, you're probably in gaming for the wrong reason. Because I mean, there's there's way more lucrative businesses and things to do than being a pro gamer. So yeah, uh, with I mean, I guess I guess I guess the international is kind of changing that, but like even then, it's still <laughs> like you could probably find something. Uh, I think I think like being a manager at Subway is like 120k or something. So if you want to really get money, do that. Um, but if you're just doing it for the love, do it for the love, bros. Um, do play the games you love. Have fun with bros. Uh, I, I don't really see a reason to do that. I think that if you have two, a few similar games or things that games that you like equally, and uh, the scenes are disparate, and there's a there's, there's definitely a different uh, amount of interest, I can understand making that choice. But otherwise, if you just really love a game, then, then you know, uh, keep playing it. Have fun. Okay. Cool. Next question. Go All ahead. right, we're skipping the next two. There's <laughs> some one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses. Um, what's a pew-pew right. pew wheel? Um, uh, what, is, what does that mean? I uh, think somebody implies that pew, pew is signing with another team. I frankly don't even know what's going on, so we're going to skip that. Skip um, it. What are your honest opinions on Shulk? You probably want to take a 20-second tweet at a tweet length answer to answer that. What are your honest opinions on Schultz, Prague? Okay. Uh, personally, I haven't gotten too far in Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, it's a pretty good game from what I got to play. I'm always a fan of a good RPG. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, this is another character who is uh, getting... Oh, you're on this. I think that's something that's uh, really, really cool about it. We have food. We're worried about the food. Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what FFS means, right? For food's sake. So. <laughs> Alright, but, yeah, well, I think, you know, that's kind of one of the beauties about the uh, Smash series. I don't think that everyone that's played Smash has gotten to at least one of the game or series because of the, uh, because of the characters and whatnot. So I think, you know, being able to uh, show off with Shulk and Xenoblade and that whole crew. I mean, I think it bodes well. I think it's a good thing. Shulk is dope, dude. He looks he looks like he has a four-year like Mark. That's cool. Uh, I want to play Xenoblade soon. Sounds, I heard it's good. All right, uh, next question. Mango, are you still there? Yeah, I am. So someone asks you, um, how good or bad are Justin Wong and PR Rog at Smash. Oh, they're awful. <laughs> they're so I saw bad. Justin, I saw Justin playing Smash 64 at, was it Apex? Yeah, yeah. yeah Apex. <laughs> so it's Justin honestly loved... like, kind of cute how bad they are. <laughs> he it's only so loved adorable. the Touch of Death games. That's why he gravitated to 64. <laughs> <laughs> He's Absolutely. not going to go Melee or Brawl. He did play Melee back in the day. At did Zone. he? Back okay. when he lived in the AP, he got stuck That's... on a Pokemon stadium match against a fox. I think he played Sheik, and he was getting tech-skilled on the rock transformation, asked how to get out of it. He didn't like the answer, and apparently never came back. <laughs> that's, that's the, uh, that was the R.I.P. moment. That's the New York <laughs> legend of Justin Wong playing Melee. Hey. I'm not sure if it's true, but it's, it's what has been passed down from generation to generation in New York Smasher. Cool. Um, right. Next. Is it weird for a 14-year-old to show up at a Smash Fest to find a message through Facebook or something? Not really. At this point, you know, we're I seeing weird. the game is... I mean, Hax was 13 when he started. Mango, how old were you when you started? Uh, 14. That's already, you know, a couple of good people to be in company with. J-Man, a lot of Smashers start young. Why I was 14. 
<laughs> Crimson himself. Uh, that was uh, worth seeing, dude. I was trying to... I was trying to... Go ahead. I was trying to give him hope, and then he just had to ruin it. Wow! <laughs> right. Yeah, I'll get, get pooped on, Blur. So, uh -oh. yeah, it's not weird. Just be... Um, just show some discernment. Don't let your parents get worried about you. Anyway, next question. Question for Prague. Is Game of Zombies still called the Megabus, yes or no? Yes. In your opinions, is it worth to stay with a low-tier character or switch to a high-tier in order to do better at tournaments? Ooh. You could I go think... real deep with this. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like you should definitely play a high-tier. I think you pl to learn the game, you want to learn huh. with the high-tier. This is what someone said about Cosmo and playing Zelda some uh, a, a long time ago. He said <clears throat> he got pretty good playing as Marth. Um as a, like a high tier character first, and then after he learned like the fundamental of the game because he was enabled by you know the move sets and the flexibility to learn that high level. Then he went to Zelda and had a better understanding, so he could exploit that with like a janky low tier character better. Right. You should definitely learn the better characters first. Yeah. 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 And then you, if you want to play, then you play whoever you want. Yes. yes. Yeah. You, you learn the game better as a top tier character overall. Yeah. And melee. Go ahead. Gotta play really well. In melee, like the low tiers, it's not like they have different options. They just don't have options. And the top tier characters, you have more options. That's what it boils <laughs> down to. Um, is HGTV the future of melee? Have you tried the C well adapter? It's like little thirty dollars and has little lag. No, it isn't until they come out with. Uh, yeah, DLC. that's that's definitely not the future of melee. It's maybe the future of streaming setups, but that's as far as it'll go until there's a, an HD remake on the Wii U. It's not the future of melee at all because uh, I, I don't I don't believe their I don't believe their numbers and uh, also it's gonna it's the it's taking away our big advantage which is that tournaments right now are not cost prohibitive. Um, we can host a lot of tournaments across the country and we host more tournaments than like any other community because it costs like nothing to run the Smash tournament. Uh, CRTs don't cost much and neither do no, neither does our game. And I think moving to HGTVs is really short sighted. That's and three for three. HGTV is not the future of melee. What is the best way to get involved with my community? Ask Frog. Oh, man. The best way to get involved is to be there and see what needs to be done. Uh, no one that's of note in a scene, whether local, global, got to that point just by sitting on their hands. Uh, it took hard work and it took time and effort. So get in there, see what they need. If they need a good TO, you be that TO. If they need a commentator, grab the microphone. You have streaming equipment, go ahead and do that. Let's see what you can do. Be a part of it. Yeah. Should a lot I, of it is, um, go ahead. Should I get Super Smash Bros. 4 ds as a download or a retail? Retail. Personally, yeah, I say, I mean, personally, I love that new game smell. And you know that it's going to be on 3DS. Everyone at GameStop, wherever you go at that midnight release, is going to be there and play against one another. Go there, meet some new people. If you have business cards saying, hey, this is our Facebook group for our local Smash Bros. scene, check it out. Good idea. But your tech skill has barely improved after months of practicing daily. What can you do to change this? Mango. Um, <laughs> Mango. What character? <laughs> it, uh, I feel like some people don't have certain tech skill for certain characters. And you might find yourself, you play Falco better than you do Fox or vice versa. You play Marf, like, you're just like, as a, I don't know what the word would be, you just can do this tech skill better. Because every character is, has their own unique tech skill in Melee. And maybe... It's kind of like finding your soulmate in Melee, like which character suits your everything best. So if you feel like you're not improving with your tech, then you should probably try picking up a new character and see how that goes. Yeah, because a lot of things can be uh, transferred one character to another. You're learning concepts, but they don't stay with the character. They stay with the entire cast. It's just right. a matter of how to apply them. And to, we have a lot of new players in here. I definitely implore you to go on YouTube, uh, check out Whack his advanced how to play. Cosmo Wright did one earlier last year, right before Evo, if you want to learn uh, those things. Um, but this one actually is one that's been popping around a bit. I know that we had an uh, Internet Explorer in the uh, stream, uh, possibly of him being a guest, but fortunately couldn't fit him on. Uh, we all talked about you know the future of the 20XX uh, hack pack, and one of the big things with that is a static Pokemon Stadium, no transformations. So this question, how do you feel about the 20XX memory card exploit bringing in a new custom stage list? Is it a viable option to expand on legal stages? 
I think it eventually might be, but I think it'll be really controversial. Uh, I, don't, I think it's a little too early to say, but I'm really excited for the possibilities, and I think that uh, once we have a greater array of uh, awesome stages, other than that one, uh, that one, uh, tr like, not the Dreamland, uh, the Green Green Sack, uh, if we had more of those, uh, then we'd probably seriously consider it. I don't like it, because, you know, the 20XX thing, it's... 20X hack pack, it's not easily accessible for like new viewers, new players, people who aren't like really in the know in the community. And I just think that sends the wrong message when they watch it on the stream or even as an in-person spectator. Like what is what is that going on right there? Like why is why is stadium not transforming? Why is green greens looking like this? I I just don't like it. Yeah, Sam. Yeah. I um <laughs> people already get confused over counterpicking. Like this adds a whole new dimension of inaccessibility. I think that's a fair argument, but you can add, like, counterpicking can become simplified by having the rule set on the screen, like you see in Project F, and things like that. And, I mean, it's just a potential. I, I agree with you guys that there's a lot of, like, it, ugliness with it, but I think that the potential is really high. Like, having more stages in Melee would be pretty dope. Um, uh, and, I mean, eventually, like, it adds a new flavor to the game. Uh, I think the potential is a little too high to dismiss it, though. Yeah, I mean, I'll I mean, I'll say this before we go to the next question. One thing I really loved about, oh God, uh, FC Legacy, uh, was going back to the old, seeing a few more of the non-standard stages that we, as we know them now, some of the vintage stages returning. It adds a bit more flavor to the scene, and it's it's weird, you know, seeing games on uh, those stages nowadays and seeing how the meta games evolved, and I kind of want to see how players interact now versus four or five years ago. So I'd say bring back the old stages before we work on custom ones. But this question here is a doozy. Uh, as a viewer, how can I support TOs? I try to support streamers through Twitch subs, but you also want to support good TOs. Get two of the best TOs in the business. What do you guys think, Jungle Guy and Crimson Blur? Okay. Jungle Very guy. nice. Can I go eat right now? I'm going <laughs> to The worst question in the world. <laughs> no, Dan, Daniel, Daniels, not not the Ask Am I Own one. This is a good Ask Am I Own question. I think as a viewer, just home viewer, not attending in person, how do I support TOs is <clears throat> create a culture of accountability online after the tournament because there's a lot of TOs who are hosting events with a lot of problems and they're just not really getting addressed after the tournament, um, and I think if we can even make the like inexperienced TOs learn from their mistakes and be held accountable to those, then the Smash world is a better place. Yeah, I, I don't think that really answers the question. This seems like criticize TO is your <laughs> criticize TOs is your answer to how to help TOs. Yeah, I I, I I think it is. I think I think actually that's that's actually a really good answer, regardless of that. Um, also, I mean, be supportive of their mistakes uh, is another thing I'd say. I say their mistakes, but be supportive and forgiving because uh, even though like me and Rob have had years and years of experience, we've hosted a lot of events, uh, the newer TOs haven't. And I think people are quick to jump on the newer TOs for every mistake they make when really it, it's kind of hard. There's, it takes a lot of learning to do, and uh, they, they usually need like a mentor at least to, to get good at it. So um, just, just be forgiving. You know, it's hard to do. Until you do it yourself, it's kind of hard to see where all the pitfalls lie. So that, that's my major thing. Okay. Uh, next question is here on Twitter again. Use the hashtag AskMILM. We're taking a couple more questions before we call a night. So, again, thank you all for tuning in and for all of your questions. All right. So. I want to I wanna consolidate. A lot of people have asked about advanced techniques, repetition, and muscle memory is the way to go. This takes practice, and there's no really way to skip that. So that answers a bunch of your questions. Sorry, we're really um, going to zip through this. But if you want to learn advanced text, watch videos, and just, just putting in the hours to just make sure you get those links. Um, there's no really other way to do it, go about it. Got to force it, and eventually it becomes second nature. One day it'll all click. Um, so let's see what's next on the list from Erzo. Uh, who I had the opportunity to interview a couple of weeks ago. Uh, what kind of logistics are involved with running a handheld Smash tournament? Any new issues you expect as a TO? 
Lag. Internet. Yeah, lag. Basically, uh, I expect there being a bunch of cell phones in the room and a bunch of 3DSs in the room to make that connection horrible. And I heard, mm -hmm. I heard a few of that because, uh, you know, we're in SoCal with the 3DS tournaments in our region. People were telling me there was times where it dipped, like it dipped real bad because there's no wired connection between the 3DSs. Yeah. So that's my number one issue. I think that will probably be the thing that, uh, it like, uh, uh, stops it from maybe being a, a, as popular it is, as it is competitively because I think at the bigger tournaments, that's going to be a real, real issue that I don't know if there's a solution for. It's like trying to use a bunch of Wiimotes at, in one room. We've all seen what, what happens there. Yeah. Um, it crashed yeah. at San Diego Comic Con. We had a tournament there, and one of the one of the four player setups crashed like twice. No. I honestly think um, Smash Four 3DS might be doomed um, as a side event forever, be just because of this. If if this somehow isn't fixed, which I don't, I don't know how it would be. No, there's only so many channels it can go, like frequencies. Yeah. Uh, as if there's no wire, it's I don't see a solution. Wireless is pretty much doomed for most tournaments. Yeah, well, I don't know. The wireless requirements really kind of garbage. Yeah. Okay, Mango, how do you practice? Do you like go for hours at uh, a time, or do you like just do one thing for a bit? Uh, I I really feel that everyone practices and learns the game differently. For me, I'm more of like I just like thinking about the game and like thinking about different situations, and then just like play just like two hours, make sure my tech skills up. Um. So it's just figuring out what works best for you. Like, I know after years and years, it takes a while until you realize, like, how can you train the best. So that's how I go about it. So you just have to find your way and see what works for you. Cool. And Jungle Guy, this is a question for you. The Big House is going to be the first event of any kind for Smasher. Is this a bad choice? Should it be starting big or should it be starting small at the Big House? Well... I don't really think there's like <clears throat> I I don't think you you can choose like oh this is the perfect moment to jump in the smash scene so I'm going to do it now. I think you just pick a tournament, go. Don't expect it to be like your um like mm -hmm. everything that you imagined it to be in your head. Just go and experience it. Smash community is really friendly. Um just got to got to start somewhere. And it's like specifically at Big House, I think like I'm biased obviously. I think it's perhaps the best big tournament to go to as the first big tournament just because you're gonna get so many matches and it's not like you're sharing setups with the fgc at evo or you're dealing with like the corporate bureaucracy of mlg or anything it's just like grassroots every to knows like what the smashers want and all of them are smashers all the attendees so yeah it's pretty much that's my answer it's a good start from a viewer's perspective i mean from an overall package you get like seven matches you get to have front row seats, like a great venue. Like watching Top Eight is always a blast, and you get to hang out with people for a weekend. And this is the way you can connect with people. So even after the tournament, you're like, hey, like I met you at Big House, want to play? Like, it's a great value. Big yeah, I, go ahead, Arian. Uh, I, I think that obviously Big House is amazing. You're gonna have a great time. Great choice. You made a good decision. Uh, but I think that uh, player retention, uh, in terms of like. Uh, just to get recurring players, uh, usually the fir how good your first tournament is is very indicative of whether you stay in the community. So, uh, I you know directing uh, newer players to the better tournaments is usually a good thing. But in general, Rob's right. Just go to a tournament; you're probably gonna have a good time. Overall, Smash tournaments are dope. Big House Three was my first tournament, and uh, it was absolutely fantastic. And I highly recommend it for first tournaments. Just saying. I met you at your first tournament. <sighs> Yeah, Sick. man. Sick, dude. All right. Um, so I think this about wraps it up. Just as a reminder, um, Robin, can you make a few last um, tidbits on the logistics of signing up, Robin, before we go? Um, yeah, signing up for Big House is very easy. You go to umsmash.com, and me being the detail-oriented TO, I think I have, like, every single piece of information on there. If not, shoot me an email, contact us. That's it. When do prices raise? Uh, September 15th is the next price increase, and then September 20th is the deadline. So, yeah. We would uh, love to see you there. Go cool. ahead. I think we are just about ready to call on night. Any last words from the one-time MLG champ, two-time, two-time EVO champion, 
Mango. What's up? So yeah, um, <laughs> fun show. I had fun. I forgot how fun the shows are. Very chill. And uh, would, you like sh- would you like to shout out any sponsors? No, I got. I can't. I can't be two esports at the melee and army stream. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I got to keep it real, dude. Come on. Shouts nice. to Jack. Shouts to Jack. There you go. Shout out to the man himself. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Up next, let's go with Crimson Blur. You're awake this time. How's it going? It's going good, dude. Shout outs to uh, my homie, uh, Deadly Pretendi, for bringing me some tacos. Um, shout out to the homie Sung for coming also. Uh, shout hey, outs to Blur, you guys. I got to interrupt you. I got to interrupt you. I had the best burrito of my life last night. Mm. Okay, you can continue now. Is that, is that it? <laughs> you're gonna leave me. You're gonna leave me like that. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, thanks for having me on again, guys. Uh, this show's great. Um, I always love coming on. All right. Uh, up next, let's go with Tapikins. Um, feeling great. I won my first tournament on Monday in a long time. Uh, SoCal's a tough, tough place to live in. Farming and, those uh, hugs, hugs victories. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm loving it. Have a three-day weekend, and I'm going to spend it with uh, Reno and Zozo. So, yeah. Nice. Cool, cool. cool. And Jungle Guy, any last words? Anything you want to shout out? Uh, shout outs to some some of the community members in the Michigan melee scene. <clears throat> um, they just actually. Like I feel like for the first time they can like everyone else in Michigan can do stuff without me even like <clears throat> laying a finger on it because uh, a bunch of people just got together and made a new PR for example uh, Beach Shibby Pod 41K Ginger Dre KJH and Moose so shout outs to them and uh, hopefully like Michigan and a lot of other communities they can start not relying on people like Arian carrying them on their backs. You know, this goes for all regions. I think everybody else can step up and uh, create collectively a stronger community. I uh, definitely agree because, well, uh, you know, you're writing your guide on how to be a better TO. I'm working with uh, my articles on commentary, which can be on Smashboards. Uh, you know, we've all had great successes and failures as being part of Smash. I think it's one thing that's beautiful about it. Um, <laughs> Still had a lot of learning to do, everyone. We still can go a lot further. So, all that being said, I want to say a big thank you to all of our guests tonight. Thank you to all of our esteemed panelists. Thank you to the best producer in the world, Cosmo Knot. Thank you so much. Too kind. Thanks, and John. Of course, thanks to you guys, the viewer. Uh, stay tuned for more Smash Brothers action. You are turned into mainly on me. We are here at the conclusion of Season 4, Episode 11, The Real MIOM 2.0, and we are just about ready to close up the show. My oh, name wait, is one Paul. last one. Have one a good night, Tapikin, so you have some more insight. Yes, God damn it. I, I, I can hold my peace. We're going to raid, and let one last PSA, if I learned anything from the yeah, Twitch right. channel, raid yeah. and collaborate with your stream. So who are we raiding? So tonight, if you want to talk about the deal, we're rating Gimme Fish. He's playing a game that's no. real on Wii or Wii U. It looks like Pikmin, perhaps. But here's his channel, Raid, hey. People's hey. Champ. Right. Take naps. All right, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you all. And we will see you in a couple of weeks. Okay, Stay tuned. Remember, People's Champ is the emote. Let's go.